行きましょうか Hello YouTube, welcome back to RPG Time. On this episode, we're going to discuss how to create skills. To start, go to your database. Choose skill on the left toolbar. You should see skills already on the left. To increase or decrease this number, go to change maximum. We're going to increase it by one. Then choose OK. I'll go to this skill. You'll see a couple of options. First, we'll name our skill. Now, we will choose an icon that will appear next to the skill. Double click the square next to icon. Choose your image, then click OK. You can add a description that will show up when you have the skill highlighted. You can then choose if the skill costs any MP, mana, or any TP. TP is something that increases when you do certain attacks. You can use TP as a different type of MP. TP is good for certain attacks that you want to be strong but you want your players to take a certain amount of time before they can use it again. Next, you're going to want to change the skill type. The skill type tells you where you will find the attack during a battle. You can change the scope to determine who is targeted. From enemies, multiple enemies, to allies. For this skill, we're going to leave it at one enemy. The occasion determines when you can use this skill. Always, during a fight, or during your menu screen. Allowing skills to be used during the menu screen means your players can do things such as heal outside of battle. We're going to set the skill to battle screen only. The repeat number is how many times the effect of this skill will be dealt to a character. One means that our skill will hit it once. Twice will mean that the skill will hit it twice. When heal is set to two, your player will be healed twice. You can determine what type of animation you want to be seen with the animation bar we're going to have a claw fire effect. The TP gain means you will gain a certain amount of TP every time you use this skill. We'll set that to one. The hit type is how you determine how the target defends from this particular attack. Physical attack means that the opponent has to rely on their defense. 
Magical attack means they have to rely on their magical defense. We will set this skill to magical attack. The message is what will be said when your character is using this skill. We're going to use one of the presets. I'll go with casts. If you want your skill to only be able to be used when the character has equipped a certain weapon, you can go to the required weapons tab, weapon type 1, and choose the weapon you want them to have to use. If you want there to be two different types of weapons you can use with a skill, you can put a weapon in weapon type 1 and a weapon in weapon type 2. Now, to use the skill, the player has to either have a whip or an axe. For this skill, we'll set both to none. Over at the top right, we have the damage box. Here we set if we want the skill to deal damage to the HP, MP, or if we want the skill to recover HP or recover MP, or even drain HP or drain MP, dealing damage to the enemy and healing the user. We're going to choose HP drain. You can also determine if you want the skill to have a certain element. We're going to choose none for this skill. The formula bar is how we decide how the game knows how much damage the skill will do. Highlighting formula will give you a list of the abbreviations for different things. For this skill, we're going to be relying on magic attack and the defender will rely on their magic defense. To set the formula, we're going to put A, which represents the user, then a dot. The dot will serve as separation and a link. We're going to link magic attack by typing M-A-T. Now I will space star space four. This means that the user's magic attack will be multiplied by four. I will now space and subtract. To add the opponent, you will put B then dot to link magic defense. The code for magic defense is MDF. I will also star to multiply and add two. Now our formula is telling the game that the user's magic attack multiplied by four is subtracted by the enemy's magic defense multiplied by two. The number the game receives there will be how much damage you do to the enemy. Moving down to the variance, this number determines the range of damage. You can also decide if you would like this skill to be able to potentially land critical hits. We're going to say no for this skill. The last thing to work on on a skill is what type of effects this skill is capable of. To do so, we're going to double click one of the rows and choose which we would like to work on. All these effects will be dealt to the enemy. Even things like recover HP will be dealt to the enemy. I'm going to choose a state. Choose add state, then the type of state you want. I'm going to choose poison. Now, you choose the chance that this skill will actually poison the enemy. I'm going to set that to 100%. I'll click OK. I'll click another row to add another effect. I'm going to add a buff. You choose which buff you want and how many turns it will last. Click OK when you're ready. I'm going to apply and click OK. This concludes this episode. Like and subscribe to show your support. If you have an idea of any tutorial you would like me to make, please leave a comment about it. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video. Hey Game Makers! So you open up your game making program of choice, let's say RPG Maker. How do you make a game? Let me rephrase that. How do you make a game that's more than just some blank maps and a guy giving you a generic quest you've played about a hundred times by now? RPG Maker's selling point is it's so easy even a child can make a game. Well this is true, not everyone can make a good or even playable game. So today, game makers, let's look at a few things we can do to make your game stand out and not feel like just another RPG maker game. Graphics and sound. If you're not artistic or not musically inclined, you might think of this as a disadvantage. I mean, if your game looks and sounds like an RPG maker game, it's gonna feel like an RPG maker game, right? Well, no. There are plenty of other things you can do to make your game stand out. If your game is solid in other areas, don't feel bad about using the built-in resources. There are a lot of easy things you can do to make yours stand out with them. Use the generator. Create your own characters. 
change the audio pitches, or get creative with the music. Just because Theme 6 is the default title theme song doesn't mean you have to use it. Seriously, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that title theme used, I'd be rich. Beyond using the defaults, there are tons of resources online, many of which are free. So if you're really trying to make a good game, the least you can do for it is spend some time on the Googles looking for some more interesting looking graphics and music. This especially applies to sound effects, oddly enough. It's something most people don't think about, but having different blips and bleeps everywhere can make a huge difference from making your game or making another RPG Maker game. Oh, and I'd highly advise decking out your title screen, whether it be with pretty new graphics, or some epic title plugin, or something else. It's the first thing your player will see, the first impression they'll have of your game. And if your title screen screams, I put absolutely the minimalist amount of effort into this, huh, need I see more? Difficulty. A big thing I've noticed about RPG Maker games is they tend to be unbalanced. Monsters have high encounter rates, and everything pretty much kills you dead. If we want our games to be hard, we need to have a reason it's hard. Do we have super amazing mechanics the player can take advantage of? Or are the monsters just killing us because we really didn't think about it? I get MB's formula system isn't the easiest thing to comprehend. Honestly, for doing anything creative, I find it incredibly difficult to understand. But that's just me. Games aren't like they used to be. They don't just get played by kids who have way too much time on their hands anymore. A lot of gamers now are teens or adults, who don't have time to sit and spend five minutes on the first set of random encounters in a game. Your game's story and characters could be amazing, but if it's just too difficult to put in the effort to play, they'll never get there. Now, I'm not saying go make your game the super easiest thing ever. You should, in all respects, at least have the option to make it challenging. But try to make it challenging in a fun way, a way that gives the player incentive to try harder. Give the player a chance to figure out how to make the battle system work for them. All in all, avoid making overly difficult games that are difficult with no reward and no reason for being so difficult. Presentation. I've gone over lots and lots of how to make your game look pretty and how to make your scenes better stuff in my tips and tricks videos. But as far as your game's presentation goes, feel free and I completely encourage you to get adventurous with it. Use a different message format, change the font, make a custom game icon. Replace the window skin. Don't feel the need to limit yourself to just what's already there. Do you happen to like a cutscene style from another game? What's stopping you from trying to figure out how they did it? Want to make obtaining items less MV feeling? Go for it, you can! Yes, it's more work. But good games are only good by the amount of effort put into them, and that's why they're good. A player can tell how much effort you've put into something, through its style, graphics, sound, and mechanics. Even if one section of it falls flat, even if it's not perfect, the player can tell what kind of work was put into it, the kind of thought behind it, and can still appreciate the value in it. Length. Some games are long, some games are short, and some games are completely open-ended. Saying you're going to make a 500-hour game means nothing. A game should be as long as it needs to be. If 90% of your game's runtime comes from overly boring random battles, there's no reason it needs to be that long. I can say this from experience, after cutting the encounter rate in my first game in half, I knocked off about 3-5 to five hours. Don't be concerned with making a full-length game or making a 30-hour game. Indie developers have the ability to make their games as long as they want them to be. You're in charge of what stays and what gets cut. If your game ends up being 5 hours long, I commend you. If your game is 15 hours long, I appreciate your dedication to it, but I'll enjoy the game the exact same if it's as good as the 5 hour one. If your game is 500 hours filled with amazing content, that's an astounding amount of dedication to put into it, so I hope it's worth playing. Being long does not make it a good game. A good game makes it a good game. Mechanics. By now, everyone and their grandmother has played a side view turn-based RPG. Does this mean it's bad and should never be used? Of course not! If your game fits using the default battle system and overall mechanics of RM, by all means, use them. But use them your way. I'm not saying go download Yonfly's entire collection of battle plugins or something, though it would definitely give you more mechanical freedom. RPG Maker is great for people with little coding knowledge. But even with the default system, make event-based mechanics. Make new skills. Use things differently and in other ways than they're intended to be used. Try to figure out new and creative ways to do things. Try to replicate mechanics you've seen. Or just try and make a completely different style of game. RPG Maker doesn't have to be limited to the basic purposes of any individual feature. Explore it and you'll definitely figure out cool ways to do things. Features. 
plugins, and the community in general. RPG Maker is great because of the people who put time and dedication into creating resources for it. It means you don't have to learn excessive amounts of scripting, or, or how to do pixel art, or write music, and still be able to release a good game. There are so many plugins that can make your game amazing. Not all of them are easy to use, but there are a vast number of simple plug-and-play ones that can make your game stand out even just a little bit. Things like battle weather or heads-up displays, battle background scrolling or smooth screen scrolling, victory battle screens, battle transitions, message window size, screen filters, weather effects. There are tons of plugins out there if you just take the time to look for them. It's as simple as going to Google and searching RPG Maker MV. This is the feature I'm looking for. There are even entire websites literally dedicated to sorting them. So don't shy away from plugins. The only way you'll learn to get better with them is if you try using them. If you don't understand something, that's fine. No one's expecting you to get everything. But these are made for the sole purpose of making your games better, so why not give them a try? Feedback. I often see people posting their early maps and such online, and then getting really disappointed and discouraged when people tell them they're terrible. I'm going to tell you the common opinion on this. Share your work, accept criticism and feedback, and get better because of it. Now, I'm going to tell you my opinion on this. Practice, fail, get better, and when you have something you're proud of, show someone you trust. Someone whose opinion actually matters to you, and who you know will give you their honest thoughts. You can always get better, but posting things online before you really get the hang of what you're doing can be very harmful. Random people think they always know what's best, and people who are just starting out really believe them. The thing with games is they don't have to be done in just one way. And you're bound to get better if you keep at it. But posting something and getting 100 reasons your game is bad is just painful to watch. I see this specifically on a lot of RPG Maker games trying to get on Steam. Not all of them. Some of them are actually pretty well done. But the vast majority of the ones I come across are very... This is my first game and I'm going to sell it feeling. You look at them and you can tell it's made by someone who either didn't put much effort in it to begin with, or someone who genuinely just hasn't had enough practice yet. But putting your game out into the world should be a happy feeling, not everyone telling you how terrible it is. So before putting your ideas and games out there, make sure you are confident in your creation. It's probably not perfect, but you're getting better, and if it's the best you can do, then be proud of it. The player, the intro. Games can take a lot of shapes and forms, and there's not just one way to start a game. Some start in towns, some start on missions, some start with unwinnable battles, the list goes on, and on, and on. But however you choose to start your game will determine if your game is good or not. There needs to be something to hook the player. Many games start out with a cutscene of exposition and then let you wander around. This is pretty standard, in fact I can't think of very few RPGs, comparatively speaking, that start any differently. If graphics are your game's high point, make darn sure your first area is gorgeous. If it's story, it should be short enough to reflect that, but not too long where it turns into an exposition fest and the player just wants to start playing. Now, new games can get away with this. They've got pretty CG graphics, voice acting, narration... You've probably got a house and a text box. So make sure to keep the player's attention, make them listen, and make them wonder about your game. Do everything in your power to keep away from exposition plot stuff happened blah 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 board. And think about plays to get the player really invested in the characters in the world in such a short amount of time. Dedication and determination. Love your game. We've talked about this in other videos, but games, and especially RPG Maker games, are built on love and the passion for game making. Even if you're just starting out, you want to make a game, don't you? The game you've wanted to make for years? The story you've always wanted to tell? The characters you want to come alive? And the gameplay to make it all happen? Good games aren't made overnight. They take time, effort, and overall the ability to see it through. Maybe you'll quit your first game. Maybe you'll quit your next 10 games. But you're getting better. And when you're ready, sit down, take some time, and make the game you've always wanted to make. Make it yours. By now, everyone's seen the Go Save a Princess and Four Heroes of Light spiel. Does that mean you shouldn't use them? Mm, not at all. Clichés and tropes exist because they work. But make them yours. Instead of the Save the Princess routine, maybe the princess is saving you. Instead of Four Heroes of Light to save the world, you play as a villain fighting them. It's very rare to see a game that actually feels completely original. And even the ones that do, you can tell the creator was heavily influenced by something else. A different game, a story, or a mechanic. But that's fine. If you love something, you usually want more of it. And one of the most fun ways to do that 
is to incorporate what you love about something into your own creation. People learn by interpreting what others do. Don't copy, but be inspired and create something unique to you. Because RPG Maker is a program anyone can use, everyone thinks they can make a high-quality game on it with no effort. They pump out games that feel like everyone else's, and this makes RPG Maker users suffer. RPG Maker is easy. It is easy enough for a child to pick up. It was 10 when I made my first gamish thing, and 13 when I made my first complete RPG. Were they the greatest? No! Am I glad I made them? Yes. I hear so often how RPG Maker can only make bad games, and that makes me sad. I've played and seen good RPG Maker games that have a lot of potential and clearly have immense effort put into them. RPG Maker is a powerful tool if used with love, creativity, and effort. It gives people who don't have teams to make games and aren't good at coding or art or music the chance to make something awesome. So join me in making great RPG Maker games! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time, gamers! Sama-sama Menjejak mimpi Sama-sama Mencari dan menanti Segalanya Direstui Hey Game Makers Characters There is so much I want to talk about here But there is only so much I can fit into a video So here goes Really think about what type of game Your character is for is this character for a massive, character-driven, plot-heavy super game? Or is it something more MMO-esque, where the player character is just there to be the player character? We'll be talking more about the more characterized characters, but just know that you can make a game with a very basic protagonist. Think Pokémon. The main character here is just, well, the player. Other silent protagonists also usually fall into this. And it works sometimes, for the player to be able to project themselves onto the character. But this also limits what you can actually do with them as characters themselves. Characters are an incredibly important part of most games. Even if your story is absolutely terrible, just having lovable and unique characters could potentially save it. Now for me, personally, characters are the basis for all of my games. I can't just sit down and be like, okay, I'm gonna make a game with this story or mechanic, now let's think of characters. Every single concept I've thought up for a game started with characters I've created. When I was eight, I created my most recognizable character, Akira, based on traits I loved about other characters. Kachi was based on my avatar in an online game, and several other characters were based on people I knew. So a few years later, I just decided these characters worked well together and wanted to make a game with them because I loved them so much. Now, thinking of the entire story for your characters is a video all on its own, but that's how it works for me. I think of the characters I want to show off, and how they'd interact with each other, then think of what kind of world they'd exist in, and go from there. The dynamic of your main team is very important. What I mean is, are you going to have a small, focused, static group of characters? Or are you going to have a large assortment of quest friends that join the party for a bit, and then just kind of stay for some reason? Having a small, focused group lets you spend more time developing them. I find characters here tend to form stronger bonds with each other, and the player has more opportunities to grow attached to them. This can also be easier from a mechanical point of view, because you have a much smaller group of characters to focus on. Class systems are good for this style of game. If you've played any Final Fantasy games with class systems, they're usually based around one small party, instead of having lots and lots of characters. In fact, focusing on a smaller cast potentially allows you to have more focus on minor characters in their lives without having the player need to control them. On the other hand, making a large cast gives the player variety, both in terms of personality and mechanics. It also gives the player the ability to pick and play with their favorite characters, if you're allowing the player access to party changes, though I'd advise being careful with how many party members you have, as it can become somewhat overwhelming for the player, hard to balance in terms of gameplay, and can be hard to have enough time to flesh out each character. I'd also advise not adding characters just because more party members! because they will turn into that one forgettable character everybody hates. With those few mechanical notes out of the way, let's talk about how to create a convincing character, shall we? In terms of role-playing games, the point is to have the player assume the role of the main character or character, to experience your game through them, and to learn about it and understand the characters. The last thing you want to do 
is make a bland, boring protagonist that just exists to fill the I'm the hero role. Let's take a look at two quick examples, Kelly. Character A here is the hero. He's got to go save the world from the evil king. He's doing this because he's the good guy. Character B is also the hero. But he doesn't like being called that. He once looked up to the evil king, but now realizes that he no longer can. He's fighting with himself, wanting to trust the king for who he used to be, but no longer can due to what he's become. Character to fight the king to save the world? Is it the right thing to do? He doesn't know, but he must do something or else all hope is lost. What I'm getting at here is characters are real. They have likes, dislikes, fears, feelings, and all that. Our job as game makers is to learn those traits about our characters and let our players get to know who our characters really are. Now, I say learn, because hey, though you may fill out character bio sheet after character bio sheet, characters are so clearly defined in your head them in plot situations, they will change, they will adapt, and they will grow. I have a very specific example, actually. Without going into spoiler territory, there's a scene in Gaia's Melody in the game. My original intention for the scene was to have a nice little cutaway conversation between two characters before carrying on with the section. Then, somehow, main character Akira
行きましょうか頑張ってくださいとりあえず町に戻りましょう。セーブします。